Hello, hello, it's Wessel here, and thanks for joining me as I continue on my adventures on SnowRunner on hard mode. And today we're up to day 12 here in the Kola Peninsula, um, about day 4 or so in Amandra, uh, gradually working our way through um, the Amandra region. We have, or Amandra map I should say, uh, we've pretty much done most of the scouty sorts of things to, uh, to complete a, a circuit of the map. And now it's time to start doing some of the delivery tasks. So we're going to hop into the Azov 7 with its little friend, the Acteon, coming along behind and, uh, and see if we can start uh, picking up some uh, tasks for deliveries. So I ended up yesterday having refueled both trucks. So we're going to head on over to the sawmill. Um, to pick up some wooden planks. Now, I could go all the way around, but I'm going to be a bit of a tricky person and try and do some cross-country work here and see if I can break through um, from the airport uh, through to the to the water's edge. So I'll quickly show you on the map. You can sort of see already where I'm heading. What I want to do is try and come down pretty much down here where it says a keepsake. So this part will be just slow going through snow. This part will be hard through the trees. But once we get there, it means we've cut off, you know, having to run all the way around there or something like that because I'm heading over this way. I've currently got the forgotten monolith task on for some reason. Forgotten civilization, I mean. I'm not going to be doing that at the moment. So once I Actually, once I get to here, we'll just quickly take that off. Now this first part's just, as I think I said, just slow going. The second part is where we're going to have some, some proper fun and games, trying to get through the trees. Just trying to see if I can spot a path through. It's not too bad. <laughs> Helps if you don't actually run into it. Now he's off 7, it's just so long. That's quite a nice angle through there. Miss that one? No, no, miss it, not hit it. might be a little bit tricky for the, for the little guy to follow on to. Oh, you can see I'm just trying to edge around this combination of trees. No, I'm not going to be able to do that I don't think. So what I might do, drop my trailer, attach my winch to the rear, and just drag the rear around a bit to straighten me up. Look, so I've made it through there. I'm not confident that we'll be able to get this guy through as well, but hey, you never know. I've got him right up behind. And of course, he catches on the tree.
Let's see, made it through that time. Again, the advantage of being in a big truck is that you can knock down the trees you don't want. Everything is good. Oh, so we've tossed the poor little guy over a rock. Hopefully we'll have pulled him back onto his feet again now. Yep. Magically he somehow got back on his feet. Okay. Now we could come up here and follow this road, but I think we're just going to run around the water's edge. But before I do that, we will um, detach our little mate and head just quickly up there to the task that we saw keep fake just so we can activate it okay so a keepsake so that's just literally going to a spot where we've been before actually in Oh, I'm not sure we have. Near the old lighthouse, anyway. So we'll do that at some stage on our journeys. Just got to be careful again of the of the big rocks. Little Acteon's very good at keeping up at the moment. Take a dive down here near the water's edge. Just try and miss the worst of the rocks. I'm going to come all the way along here and find the sawmill eventually. That's the plan. So we can load up some wooden planks. Again, big rocks everywhere. Just nasty all round. Oh boy, that was really nasty there. We've got a big rock underneath somewhere towards the back by the looks of it. Hopefully we'll be able to force our way past. No. Okay, so we'll use the switch to the little one. Hopefully we can get him off that rock. But there's a few big rocks there, that's why we're having some trouble. It's quite a lot of big rocks. One underneath the front, one underneath the middle. Ah, oh boy, oh boy. But I don't think we've got anything that we can... I'm trying to use the Acteon as a, re a reverse, so it's not going to work. So we'll drop the Acteon and just see if we can pull ourselves off all on our own. Uh. After much bouncing and fiddling, he probably tip. Oh no, he didn't. Kept his wheels nicely. Okay. So we have to navigate this icy part now. We're going to do it together, but most importantly, I don't want the uh, the Azov to uh, fall in. 
Because I don't think that the Acteon will have a great joy pulling him out. That's interesting. We're getting a real push from the Acteon there. Stop pushing. You're not helping. In this case, I think I've got the Acteon a bit too close. But we'll see how we go. That'll do. That'll do. Oh, that's tight. That's tight. That's tight. So, of course, a, a truck like this one that has such a poor turning circle. Although its turning circle isn't as bad as you might think, given it has rear-wheel steering, so that definitely helps it. Try and miss that big rock, that looked scary. Head on our way up this path. station thingy was. Might have to disconnect here. Let's deforest the place. on its wheels, so that's good. Just come over this snow rise. Join the poorly named road. along like we did in the Tartan. We're going to get to the sawmill. Oops, that felt bad. Ah yes. Just move on on our own for a minute. his little head. Yep. Ah, because he's trying to jump over that rock, that's why. Around the rock. Unfortunately here, there's no option to um, manually load, so 
We're going to load two wooden planks. And have to pay for it. But, that's a mandra. And then we'll continue on. And over to the, uh, eventually to the garage. Or the future garage. Now we've loaded these two wooden planks for a task that is coming up. So it's a bit of a my one of my naughty ones. Where we don't actually have the task yet for these wooden planks. But we know we're gonna need them. Cross over here like we did in the Tartan, not like we did in the TUZ. <laughs> like bash in the back there because I haven't got the engine turned on, that's why. So let's pop the engine on. A little little uh, Acteon as well, so we don't run into the back. Again, we'll take the easy route the nasty turner rather than the hard route with the easy turn see the uh, ASOP could actually get around there in just a three point turn whereas the Tartan needed a five point turn Definitely has a better turning circle than you might expect for something so long. Tartan right where I probably want to put it. So let's stop that guy for a second. Change the Tartan. Change 
back into the little Acteon, we should be able to refuel from the fuel carrier to the Acteon and the Tartaran through frack. Oh, we can't do the Azov 7. Yeah, that's a pity. Okie doke. Speaking of the Azov 7 though, change into it. Run it back so we can refuel from it. Before we do any refueling. Uh, unpack the cargo. And we're going to just offload some of this timber onto the road here. Because we're going to want that later on. And I might not be in the right place, so I'll um, just move over a little bit. Because I want to put the other one into the Acteon. Really is hard to get to get one slot of wood, which is the the biggest cargo I think, into the Acton. Okay, that'll do. Fuel carrier trailer into Azov. Alright, now, so now we've done that, we're going to start off on another task, which is called Broken Power Station. And here we need to deliver two metal beams from uh, the substation, uh, to the substation, sorry. And in order to do that, we're going to pick it up from the spot here. There's a spot, a warehouse up here. So let's go and do that. And this one, broken power station, is important because you need to do that to complete it before you can get to, I can't remember what it's called I think it's broken power lines or fixing power lines something about power lines anyway uh, and once you've done that one I'm pretty sure that opens up the garage so we're now going to make an effort to do the power station and then the power lines and that hopefully will let us then have a garage up here in Amandra which will be very neat so I'm heading back pretty much the same way I came originally with the Tartaran Occasionally, trees put up quite a fight. Oh, and of course, with the Azov 7, you're sometimes pushing your nose into the ground as well. Because the clearance at the front is very low. But not low enough that you can actually be a bulldozer. No, all of those rocks don't get pushed out of the way. Ow. Now we left a fuel trailer here, 
which will probably be useful at some stage. But for the moment, we're going to keep on picking up. Now, as you can see from the yellow sticker, the pickup point is up there to the left. But because I need two metal beams, I'm actually going to do something I normally don't do. I'm actually going to buy a, a, a two-slot trailer so I can do it in one trip. So yes, I'm actually spending money. What? Spending money? Shouldn't be allowed. There we go. The sideboard trailer. That will do nicely for carrying... Um, well, two slots of cargo. And a metal beam takes up two slots. Now I'm not going to refuel at the moment, but I may refuel on the way back. And we're climbing up that hill over there. I'm actually going to go round the riverside, water's edge. Once again, fallen trees act as a, a break. Largish rocks over here, but nothing that is too hard to navigate. Can head up this way. Get our own nose out of the way. We should be okay. This is not a particularly friendly road to travel, so that's why I thought I'll take the trailer because I don't want to come up here any more often than I need to. In there is a weather place, weather spot. Now, I'm in two minds as to whether I should take the Azor 7 in there. I think I won't. Um, it's probably more fuel efficient if I did, but I'm going to come back with the Tartaran. That's just too scary, I think. It's a bit rocky, bumpy and generally bad. So I'll come back with the Tartan later on and pick up that one. As you can see, this is pretty slow going along here. And a lot of it is simply because of the um, the low nose on the um, oops. yeah the low nose on the SF7 it just uh, it just catches on the snow in this case so it's acting like a snow plow now and then once we clear the snow 
it can get a bit more of a wiggle on. here is going to be being able to turn the trail around. Not so sure that I've got space inside to be able to turn the trailer, but there's no way that I can reverse that trailer in there. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to turn the whole thing around here, load up the truck, then come back, offload the truck into the trailer, then go and load the truck again. A bit of trailer abuse, never hurt anyone. If I grab the winch on the back of the trailer, it's not too bad. In fact, that's probably going to do. I think we've got a little bit of angle on the trailer, but it's not too bad. in here. So there's obviously a contest we can do at some stage as well called Dirty Business. Fine. I'll do that right now. Again, there's no facility to um, manually load. Auto load that onto the truck. And then hopefully I should be able to pretty much put it into the trailer. weak this crane is. It is worse than pathetic. Alright, I'm going to put it back in the trap. Right. So 
that's happily loaded up the trailer. I was now off of the trailer in a, in a spot where I can't get back into the... <laughs> oh dear dear dear. That was silly, wasn't it? Okay. Do it the other way. Got our two metal beams loaded. Pack them both. If necessary, I can unpack them. spots we have to be mega wary of dipping. So we'll come to those shortly. See we've dug our nose in on our way up. <laughs> yes these tippy spots normally are when we have to go round rock and there's something that we you know throws us off balance or generally something mean I think coming up here with this rock in the middle of the of the path that's pretty nasty again we're just ploughing with our nose again at the moment do a little bit of winching. I think I've said this a few times in the various days efforts. I tend to try to winch from the middle of the truck, not from the very nose. Just to get more stability when you're winching from the from the centre. Oh yeah, better let go of the winch. <laughs> Always a good idea though. I think this corner can be a bit trolley, mostly because of this tree there, that one I just rammed. That tree acts as a, a real uh, grabber as you're coming around. You can see I'm trying to turn inside that tree turn inside that for me and the trailer yes okay that's good we should now whoa just a bit of a winch going on there has that got a bit scary uh, I think that way to that one Again, that rock there gets right in the way, but we can straddle it if I can get away with it. Alright, so... Oh, don't speak too soon. <laughs> right, now I can say it. We've come down that path without having lost our trailer, more importantly. I was pretty confident the truck would be okay. But the trailer is a, always another matter. means that I didn't have to do that nasty effort twice. 
Now, there is a way to go across these rocks here and literally go straight across the middle, but that's not very Azov 7 friendly. The front, nosy front that we have. So I'm going to come back around the edge again like, like I did when we were getting here. The only problem with this is there's some very big rocks that can seriously upset either the truck or the trailer. Like that. So we'll just uh, we'll just go back to safety first to make sure we're we're winching as we go. Yeah, there's definitely heavy mud and big rocks here that catch on both the the truck and the trailer wheels. But once you pass them, you're okay. don't have to refuel here but I'm going to anyway I'll leave with 300 litres of fuel there for later on and now we're heading down to the fuel station now I don't know if we'll get there today I hope so but I don't know that we will case I have to pull from the front. And we'll do that for a bit until I feel like I can get the middle going, which should be about here. Again, a pretty nasty combination of rocks and snow there. On this side, we've got loose rocks that, of course, make things even nastier. And I'm trying to avoid the worst of them by coming over this side. I don't know if that was successful. There's a tree branch up there that I can winch to, though. Or a falling tree, I should say. So between... Oh, come on. impassable. Almost. Oh, I wonder if we're still on a rock. Or whether that's the trailer that's having trouble. Can I? Alright. sneaky sideway so that we don't have to deal with that fallen tree on the main road. We've done well because we haven't had to unpack the cargo at all yet, so I'm pretty happy with that. Because that's always our, our option one, so we can always unpack the cargo, which makes the truck a lot lighter. But we didn't need to, so I'm happy with that. So we're going to come all the way down. So it's a fair drive to get to the substation. We'll come past the past the garage. Or future garage. And 
and I'm going to load up this timber. I'm going to overload my truck and pop this little bit of timber on top because I'm going to need this much later on. I'm hoping this will work. We'll just leave the crane there this time. Take the anchors off though. So I'm not holding on with the crane, but I'm squishing it. So we'll see if that works. There are a few spots along here that are pretty off-angled, but might make it a bit tricky holding that wooden planks on. But if they fall off, then we'll just uh, pick them up again. That's the advantage of running with a, a truck with a crane. this cracky braggy ice over mud part. Once we've done that, pretty right again. As I say, I'm hoping I'll be able to get to the power station before the end of today's session, but uh, it could be a bit touch and go. Because this path along here is also another one that's uh, quite muddy and slushy with braggy ice. I will stick to the snow to start with. There are some really nasty tree stumps. Oh, and trees. And rocks. Yeah. Um, they just get right in the way. Well, that's a knockdown of the tree, so he's gone. Let's see how we've got a lot of breaking ice around us here. So we'll come on here and then cross over. Sometimes going across the ice is better than running with it, if you know what I mean. We do have a, a tree there we can winch from. We're still moving, so I'll try and go without. the snow on the side is not much better than the, than the ice on the road. There we go. That's pretty cool. And we'll head off to the right here because that's where the yellow arrow is. rocks again. That should be easy enough. You'll notice I haven't done a whole lot of driving in the driver's seat while we're here in Amanda. 
And that's largely because it's just scary. But we'll give it a go now. Because it has been ages since I've been in the driver's seat. And I do like to try and change it up a little bit. Now I've got to be careful of cracking ice along here. Head up, now we're cooking. Of course in the driver's seat as well, I can't tell if I drop my... Uh, if I drop my wooden planks that are currently on top, so... I'm hoping that I haven't. I don't think we've gone over anything that would make me drop them. But that might be all we can do in driver's seat today, because I don't want to go under here and knock it off. Pretty good. And we've got some big rocks around here, so I just have to be a bit wary of those. found another fuel trailer, so thank goodness me, all our Christmas has come at once. Pretty darn cool. One broken power station happily unbroken. So that's pretty good. So there we have the broken power station fixed uh, and there's the task for repairing power lines which is the one I want to do next so let's turn around and see if we can activate that task That's the one that gives us access to location. So that gives us the uh, access to the to the garage, which is pretty cool. All right, that's, uh, what am I doing? First things first, pack that cargo. Store the crane, much better. Right, so we might refuel while we're here. And then, I'm gonna head up the hill, up the hill, up the river. Do the, a bit of river exploring. here that have washed down the river. Spot. 
Ah, this is... Okay, let's open that up. I didn't realise this was here. Okay, so this is... Uh, price of victory. We're going to be diving to the lost... So this is the this is the spot where we drive to the lost BA-20s. There we go. We've done that. So now we've got to find two armoured cars and deliver them to the airport. And in fact, I think that's what there is actually what I was looking for. But just run ourselves back a little bit. Yes. Come on, trailer, keep going backwards. Guess I can head up there. On to the snow. Unpack the cargo. Chuck it out. So I just don't want it here at the moment. Just chuck it on the sand here, on the sand, on the snow here. That's good. Now I'm just looking at the angle of that trailer. It's not bad. Just run forward a little. That's probably better. I'm going to detach it. So I want to sneak down here on my own. Come up this icy river. Because up this icy river, I reckon I'm going to find a VA armored car. Now this is perhaps being a bit mean because uh, obviously I know where it is and the idea is that you go and get the metal detector and then use the metal detector to find the uh, armoured car but hey I don't need to do that because I already know it's here. And check it out, there's a little armoured car. Steady on. Now, don't think that I'm going to be able to reach it from here. Oh, not quite. So I'm going to have to run forward. And unfortunately, uh, this is a bit icy and disgusting. So now, I can't stop myself. I can't stop myself coming down the hill. But that's okay. I'm now down the hill. And I can find this cute little guy. And with a bit of luck, even though it's the weakest crane in the world, I can pick him up, spin him around and pop him in the tray. He seems to weigh less than a car and loaf, to be honest. Okay, so I've picked him up, and I reckon that's all we're going to do for today, because it is pretty much the end of day. So I'm going to be left here, at this bottom of this icy ravine, with a little guy in the back, but at least... Sorry, wrong one. But at least we have picked it up. So that's pretty cool that we found the first little armoured car. Wow, it's all coming together. So we've uh, we managed to deliver the metal beams. 
We've activated the next task, which is the power line fixing. And I'm on the, as a side thing, I've found an armoured car. Very cool. So uh, we've done well today. Really good. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, it's been uh, yeah, some, some good progress made. Otherwise, though, uh, I'll be back into it again tomorrow and uh, we'll continue on with this little armoured car and uh, see what else we can find as I continue on the uh, SnowRunner adventures. Thanks for watching and uh, hopefully you join me again tomorrow. Otherwise, it's bye for now. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.